All right, folks, we have Paul Watt here on this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs. Paul was from our Oklahoma trip, really great guest. He is a union worker and he shares some of his favorite stories over the year. Uh, he's hunted public ground across Oklahoma and uh, some, some pretty cool deer. You get to see a deer with coyote teeth, um, which is something you don't see every day. So you can check that out here in this week's episode. Now, one other thing here too, I know we talked about it last week. We're about to turn six years old. Exodus is about to turn six years old. This is a really big um, celebration for us. We couldn't do it without the support of anyone watching this and we appreciate you. So as mentioned, if you want to join some celebratory savings, um, go to our website and sign up for our email list. We're not gonna spam you, but you're gonna be the first to hear about some special savings. We never give discount codes for big savings. It's usually our anniversary sale and Black Friday. So this is a really good opportunity if you're looking to get um, some renders for this upcoming fall. So be sure to go do that now. Let's go ahead and get right into this episode. Hello. I'm Paul Watt, and this is my place. Come on in, we'll talk about some deer. All right, well, as I said, I'm Paul Watt, and I'm a union mill worker. I work down at the paper mill here in our prior Oklahoma. And this here's my deer collection. I've been hunting since 1990. It's been about 30 years. Took me a while to gather them up, but I'm pretty proud of them. This is my first, uh, my biggest archery buck. Shot him at 37 yards, walking away with a toxic broadhead out of my no-cam Matthews bow. Um, lost him for three days, and then we went in with a dog, found him, he, he'd only made it about 150 yards, but he crawled up in a brush pile, and we'd walked right past him, and hadn't found him, but uh, we, we recovered him, and coyotes had done a little damage so he got a new cape but I was glad to have him and got him on the wall uh, this is my wife's biggest buck so far uh, she's hunt she hunts with me now and I was excited for her killed it off our private property uh, got a little 16 acre spot it's not not very big this was a public land buck this is my grandpa Harvey's uh, it was killed in 95 or 96 right before he had his stroke that's the biggest buck as far as I know he's ever seen, much less killed. And the, uh, it actually made it through a house fire and it made it through a storage building. And after he passed away, uh, they was getting rid of some of his stuff and I was able to get it. And I asked for it. My grandma let me have it. And, you know, it's, it's right there on the wall. And I'm proud of it. And I like to keep it to where I can see it. And then these two little ones in the corner, these were my grandpa John's. Um, he killed those both the uh, same year with a crossbow. Uh, he said he had some interest in killing a deer. He was always a duck hunter, and he had some interest in killing some deer. And We went and got him a crossbow, and he killed that one the first day of bow season, and that one the third day of bow season, and that was the end of his crossbow hunting. He killed two bucks in, in, in three days, and he said he was done. He, didn't need, he wasn't going to do any better than that. So, uh, but after he passed away, uh, I got those also. They're... They're, uh, they're on the wall. I'm glad to have them. This buck here is actually my daughter's. She killed him when she, when she was 14. That's her first buck. It's an 11 point. It's got uh, nine inches of webbing on this uh, left side here. Obviously a young deer, but you know we've always kind of felt that the kids should shoot whatever they want to shoot. And as adults, we try to you know wait for a little bigger, mature deer now. I mean, I've got a lot of younger deer that probably should have been let walk, but I wasn't managing at the time, so. I don't feel too bad about them. But uh, yeah, anyway, that was her first buck, 11 points. This is my first buck. It's a spike with fork and, with the eye guards and a little kicker, makes him a five point. There's a little bit of difference. Actually killed off the same property. <laughs> uh, and then uh, this is my first big archery buck, uh, nine point shot uh, over an eight air, shot it with a Matthews Black Max many years ago and then this buck here which I had coyote teeth put in and red eyes just to harass my taxidermist mostly because I seen a cool picture on Facebook and I'm like can you do this and uh, my buddy over at Wilson's whitetail taxidermist he actually uh, pulled it off and this uh, it's wearing a collar that was a uh, that was baby dog's collar she was about 13 when we had her put down and I uh, I held on to her collar and 
That just seemed like a good place to put it where it didn't get lost. She was, she was important to us. And then uh, this buck, he, uh, I shot him over an eight air. And this buck, it's kind of an interesting story, or at least I thought it was interesting. I was hunting out of the stand where I killed my biggest buck ever that we'll work on here in a minute. I was hunting in that stand and something just in the back of my, hot, my mind just kept saying, go to the watering hole, which was a, like a dry, uh, wet weather creek that runs through the bottom holler and that property over there. And there's just one spot about the size of a Volkswagen car that just holds water. Something in the back of my mind just, just kept go, saying, go to the watering hole, go to the watering hole, go to the watering hole. I'm sitting in that stand, I'm like, I want to be here. I just kept telling me, go to the watering hole. So I got up, took my rifle, uh, went to my 270, and uh, I went down there and this old mangy coyote came in. And before I even got to the watering hole, and I, I shot the coyote, and I walked up there, and I sat down, I hadn't been there probably a minute, and a little old doe come bouncing in, and she come right by me and had a little basket rack eight right on her butt, and he come up, and he turned and bristled at me and was grunting at me, and I just kept telling him, said, go on now, you're not the one, get out of here, and he finally, he finally turned and went after the doe, and I was kind of shook up because he wasn't 10 yards, and he was bristled up and puffed up as best as he could, all 105 pounds of him probably, and uh, he, uh, but when he went on, I sat down, and it wasn't a couple of minutes, and and he came in, uh, shot him at about 15 yards. He turned to run, and I hit him again, just basically touching holes in his shoulder, and he went on down right there. And you know, he was that was a long drag. That was a big deer for Oklahoma. Uh, this buck here. He's not very wide. He's got some really long tines. Uh, I don't know what he scores. I don't score my stuff, really. But I uh, had my daughter Haley with me on him, and he come through pushing four does, and she seen him first. I was looking south, and she was looking north out of our two-man ladder stand, and uh, she's bumping me. She said, Dad, Dad, big buck, big buck. And I turned, and, and he was moving at a pretty good clip through about 170, 180 yards of river bottom down through there, and... I was able to pick a hole and hit him a little high on the shoulder and he went down and we were celebrating and I looked over there and he was he was kind of turning to get up so I, I shot him he was laying down I shot him in the center in the sternum the second shot and he just he, he was done really handy on that one uh, I drug him about 60 yards right into the front of our boat so it wasn't much of a drag out <laughs> This buck here, the archery buck, killed him with a no cam. He not a real big deer, uh, but I, uh, I had just come off a back injury, and I killed him the day after I got my work release to go back to work from my back hurt. And uh, killed him, like I said, killed him with my bow. And I just thought it was pretty cool that first day I actually really got to go in there and hunt. I was able to harvest a deer. And then uh, this is my 2019 buck. Nice. I, I call him a nine. He's probably an eight. He don't. That really, that tying down there probably not long enough to count, but that was a, I hunted so hard in 2019. I cried when I killed that deer. He was, uh, never seen him on trail camera, didn't know nothing about him, but I had been hunting every day that I wasn't at work. If it wasn't pouring rain or 60 mile an hour winds, I was in a tree stand. I worked so hard and it was way up in second week of uh, rifle season when I finally killed him. And I cried, I ain't gonna lie. It, it, it really touched me that I was finally able to, to get one because I had worked so hard. It's kind of a testament to, you know, keep trying, keep keep going, be there. Be in the woods, you might kill something. You ain't going to kill one on the couch. This is actually my first, what you might call a big buck. Uh, shot him five times with a 30-30. Yeah, open sight 30-30. I was 21, and I had been at the bar the night before, and I was kind of hung over. I was sitting in my tree stand, and... I was like, I shouldn't be here in this tree stand. So I got down, took a nap. About 11, I woke up, went, come. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go home. So I went walking out and I decided to go, to go uh, there's a little corner of woods just north of the pond on the property down there. And there's a big old elm tree. And I decided I'll just go sit down, I was still tired. So I went up there and I sat down and had my grunt call, uh, night in hell grunt call, I think. and. I was just playing with it, grunting, and almost treating it like a saxophone or something, just bored. And it sounded like a bear growling out of the brush. I mean, and 
he stepped out at about 18 steps, and I was not using a grunt crawl call properly at all in any way, form, or fashion. And uh, like I said, he came out about 17, 18 steps. I guess he called it a, a roar. He was growling at me out of the brush before he stepped out. And I shot him the first time, and he started making just kind of a half moon shape around me at 15, 20 yards. And he kept running. I kept shooting him. I put five in him. He still managed to jump the fence onto the neighbor's place, but he only got about 10 yards in, got his antler tangled in some brush. And once he went down, he couldn't get back up. So. I hooped and hollered. My dad heard me all the way across the 120 acres hollering. He knew I'd finally got a big buck. He was excited. I was, I was ecstatic. I really was. And then, uh, of course, up here in the corner, there's a, a collection of little ones and stuff I killed growing up as a kid. And across the couch, we've got, you now this is, got a few, you know, decent bucks. This some. You know, he don't score much, but he was actually a, a big five and a half year old deer. He field dressed at like 167 pounds, which is which is a pretty good sized buck for Oklahoma body wise. This one, I, my buddy that owns the property, I killed that one off of. He was uh, he was not happy when I killed this deer because we was supposed to let him walk, and it was really foggy that morning, and there was some brush and. The sun that was getting through was just shining on him, made him look a little bigger through the woods than he really was, and yeah, <laughs> he wasn't happy about that one. But uh, he still lets me hunt there, so it's all right. Uh, just some, just some random little deer that I've killed over the years. Uh, this, this here is my only ten point. Uh, also, the biggest buck I ever killed with a muzzleloader. Killed him a couple of years ago on some uh, public land, uh, same public land some of these other deer come off of. I also thought he was a little bigger than he is, but once you got one killed, it's the time for sizing them's over with. It's it is what it is. I'm still proud of him. I was happy because I finally got a ten point. I, at the point I killed this ten point, I had I don't know a half dozen eight points and two eleven points, and I just I couldn't get a clean ten. I just I just couldn't I couldn't buy a clean ten, and this one finally come along and. He's no giant, but he is a clean 10, and I'll take it. I guess uh, this is the last buck here. This is the last buck I killed off the family property before it was uh, sold, and I lost that. Um, he's a He was a big body deer. That property, they, uh, they was either really nice bucks, or they just wouldn't develop. I don't know if it was genetics, food. You'd kill a 175-pound buck with little scrub horns, and you'd kill a 140-pound buck that was big off the same property. You just, you just never really know what she's going to get out there. And then this, of course, is my best buck to date. He's a 11-point. This brow tine is uh, repaired. It's, it, don't, uh, it don't count for his scoring. I scored him without the brow tine, brow tine at 159 and what was it 13 sixteenths with a 151 gross. If he wouldn't have broke it off, he would have been just shy of 170. Um, he's a pretty decent deer for Oklahoma. No uh, you know, no agriculture anywhere in the area, just an acorn and leaf buck. Uh, he was 30 and a quarter inches around his neck. I don't know what he weighed because by the time we killed him, they quit checking them in and, and weighing them when you kill them. 190, 200 dress, somewhere in that area is what I would guess him at. Shot him at, uh, I think, 37 yards, twice with a 270. Shot him in the sh uh, shoulder, and he spun like he was going to run away, and I put another one in and shot him right beside his tail, and it come out through the uh, center of his chest and set him down. That was, like I said, that's my biggest one. My wife was in the stand with me when I killed him, and we hadn't been in the stand probably five six minutes we come walking in off the hill and he come out of the brush i think i think he come out to see what we were um i think he heard us walking in the in the leaves because we wasn't trying to be quiet the wind was blowing uh the wind was blowing 30 35 mile an hour that day it was hot i didn't even want to go i wasn't i was not going to go to the woods today i killed the biggest buck i ever killed my wife talked me into it about 2 15 2 30 in the evening she's like let's just go to the woods i didn't even want to go and she convinced me to go, and we we got to the stand, and, and like I said, about five minutes later, the biggest buck I ever killed comes out. So, 
be in the woods, you know, just be in the woods. And then uh, got a couple of sheds. I'm not really a shed hunter, but found this one off our place in Salina. He actually had eight points on this side, but I was young and I shaved his brow tines off to make a rattling horn out of it. You know, whatever. You, know, you got to learn. Sometimes some of us learn a little slower than others. But uh, and then this one come off the Spavanol, Spavanol area, and I'd like to have seen him. That had, he had to have carried some real mass. If there's that much left after the squirrels got a hold of him. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much my collection. Um, I'm proud of them. It's it's took a long time to gather them up, and I, I hope to get get a bunch more on the wall over the next few years. And, and I appreciate you all coming in to see me and see my dear. And I think now it's time for you to leave. <laughs>